اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم عم يتساءلون عن النبا العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون الم نجعل الارض مهادا والجبال اوتادا وخلقناكم ازواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So الحمد لله we are, we are on the last of the juz and Allah has enabled us to come all this way we ask him to take us to the end of it right, with the best inshallah and with the greatest barakah and benefits so in the name of Allah we begin Surah Al-Naba Surah Al-Naba this is the tiding Naba means information some information that has come so it's the tiding we're discussing it's a most of the surahs, there's only a few, two, three, four that are Madani surahs in the entire chapter. Majority of them are, Mad- uh, are Makki surahs. They're going to be discussing a lot of the absolute basics. Uh, it has 40 verses and th- these beginning surahs are still split into uh, two, two rukus, two sections. And then eventually all the rest of them will just be one. Um, one of the main discussions in here is about ba'ath, ba'ad al-mawt, resurrection after death. And that's why right at the beginning, the, it's amma yatasan. What are they asking about? Right? Ani naba il azim about the tiding, about the mighty news, the great news, right? In which they're differing about. Soon they will know, then soon they will know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they used to, what they used to do is they used to, uh, as a denial and as uh, to mock, they used to ask Allah, uh, they used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, when is this going to come and when is this going to happen and so on and so forth. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that um, if you look from between w- one to three, that's the question that they're asking about that. They're differing, soon they're going to know about it. So some of them used to. Um, what is this Naba'ul Azim? A Naba'ul Azim. The great tiding, the great news, however you want to refer it. The big, the, big, the, the big news, right? What is the big news here? According to the great Tabi'i Mujahid, who's a Mufassir of the Quran, he says that this actually refers to the Quran. However, if you look at the... There's no doubt that the Quran is the mighty news. But I think in this context, if you look at the rest of the surah, it actually seems to indicate that the big information that they're referring to is uh, not the day of judgment or actually it refers to the day of judgment because that seems to fit more into uh, the gist of this surah anyway thereafter that in the next verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just lays out that didn't I do this didn't I do this and mentions a number of his powerful contributions to this world and then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to the various different graphic uh, scenes and imagery of the day of judgment so paradise and hellfire is mentioned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something like didn't we make the earth, didn't we spread the earth out for you, didn't we make the, uh, the jibal, the, the mountains, didn't we make them pegs to keep the earth stable and we made the humans into pairs, we gave you sleep to, uh, to have comfort with, we gave you clothing uh, to wear and we gave you a, a means to uh, the daytime to go and earn your living, and, and so on and so forth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the heavens, the, the skies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that provides the light in the daytime. All of that is mentioned if you look from between verse 6 and 16. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah can definitely give you, He created all of these things in the first, He can definitely give you life again. He is also going to establish such a sense of justice on that day that he's going to bring everybody together. So if you look at verse 17, for example, you, you'll see the 
uh, you'll see the discussion in the Yawm al Fasli kana miqata, Yawm yunfakhu fi surah, and then he discusses the blowing of the trumpet. Then, if you go on from verses 21 to 37, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses that after this justice prevails on that day, then there's going to be people who will go to paradise and there's going to be people who will go to hellfire. So you've got the two. So for example, from verse 31, it says, in the lil muttaqina mafaza, the righteous ones, they will have all of these great things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, talks about several things about paradise. And then after that, towards the end of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes that the, de- that the day of judgment is definitely a uh, a certainty and there's no doubt about it uh, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to re- reward all of those who who have done good all of that discussion is there and the final part here is inna anzarnakum adhaban qariba i'm warning you of a very imminent punishment when a person is going to look at ma qaddamat yada, what his hand has sent forward, and then the kafir is going to say, the disbeliever is going to say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. How I wish I was just soil. How I wish I was just dirt. Now, what exactly does that mean? So, one, mean is that one meaning is that I wish I'd just remained dirt and had never been born. Because remember, Adam Islam came to be born from soil. That's one meaning. Another one is that I wish I wasn't arrogant. I wish I was more like the soil which is humble that people walk over it i wish i was humble and i didn't act arrogantly number three it could also mean that i wish i was an animal because what's going to happen is that they're going to see the animals brought all the animals uh, they're going to be given compensation if they're aggressed against one another and so on that whole discussion is there then the, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say kunu turaban become soil now because they don't go to paradise or hell so they're finished. This is just to establish justice on that day that they bring the animals to do that. So when these guys will see that, they will say, I wish I was an animal. So what it means by I wish, I, uh, how I wish I was just soil, it, it could be just that meaning. By that, this surah ends and we move to the next surah, Surah Al-Nazi'at. Surah Al-Nazi'at is um, the 81st surah, uh, sorry, 79th surah of the Quran. It has 46 verses and it's most likely the 81st surah to be revealed. This one starts off like what Dhariyat did and uh, how Wal Mursalat did. It starts talking about Wal Nazi'ati Gharqa. So Naza'a means to, means to drag forth, to pull, to extract. But Naza'a means to pull. So he's saying Nazi'at, those which drag forth. وَالنَّاشِطَاتِ نَشْطَى وَالسَّابِحَاتِ سَبْحَى فَالسَّابِقَاتِ سَبَقَى فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ أَمْرَى All of these are oaths. Five things. Oaths are being taken about. يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَ تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّادِفَ About the day the quake will take place. Right? So it's a Makki surah again, as I mentioned. It has two sections. And again, this is discussing the various different states uh, of um, the different stages of the hereafter and the different events that will take place there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the beginning part is talking about the angels doing different tasks. Now, if you look at a translation, you'll figure it out, right? The, the angels are doing the different task, what they're told to do. That's how it begins, by those angels, by those angels. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the event that is going to take place. Um, although, um, thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will definitely be brought back to life. Again, the whole resurrection issue is dealt with from verse 10, 11 and, and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you exactly how it's going to happen. It's going to be so simple the way it happens. Thereafter, that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings quickly a discussion of Pharaoh and Musa alayhi salam again and what happened to their people when they did not listen. Right. So all of that is mentioned. This is just to remind the people of Makkah that you, you know about Pharaoh. These are the true events about it, so you, you should listen to this. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, those who do good, those who are excessive, who give preference to the dunya. So if you look in verse 37, 38 onwards, then he's saying that Jahannam is their place. As far as the one who is fearful of the position of their Lord, who, who prevents the nafs from going after their desires, then Jannah is their abode. And again, the question is, yes, alunaka anisa'ati ayyana mursaha. Verse 42. They ask again, when is the day of judgment? When is it going to be sent? Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, responds to that. 
And he says, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَ That remember, you're not going to be able to convince everybody, but you can. فِيمَا أَنْتَ مِنْ ذِكْرَى إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَ You are only, you are going to warn those who fear the last day, who fear the day of judgment. كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ دُحَاهَا And the thing about this is that those who are too indulgent in the dunya and they're so arrogant about it and they feel so secure about it, the day the day of judgment will occur, it will actually just seem as if they only stayed for one evening or one morning in the world. It'll just seem so fast. I mean, I'm trying to picture that. And the only example I can give is that when you know, when you got a big task ahead of you and you see the seriousness of that task, everything of the past just seems like it just happened so quickly. It's all relative. At the end of the day, remember, time is relative. The fact that we've got 24 hours is just based on the sun. Right? That is it. That's just because they're reference points. Otherwise, what is time really? Right? Time is just the reference point. Uh, that's why it's what you do in the time what's most important. So now we move on to Surah Abasa wa Tawalla. Abasa wa Tawalla starts off with a verb. And it's actually, the title of the surah is also Surah to Abasa. Abasa means he frowned. Wa Tawalla, and turned away or ignored. That a blind person had come to him. And Allah then says, what do you know that maybe he wanted to seek purification? And he would have taken advice and maybe that advice would have benefited him. So now here is one of the few places in the Quran where the Prophet ﷺ is being told off by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a proof of the veracity of the Quran because the Prophet ﷺ did not hide these verses, right? And neither did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not bring them in the Quran. I mean, he brought them in the Quran. What happened here, the background to this is that there was a blind Sahabi, a very wonderful Sahabi called Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum. Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum. Now, on one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ had gotten an audience with some of the disbelievers, and he was giving them some da'wah. Right? It's a very, you can say, a very sensitive moment where he's got this opportunity, he's giving them da'wah, and suddenly one of your own people come about, and they start asking you a question. Now, he's a blind man, he doesn't know. Right? But the Prophet ﷺ felt a bit irritated, that, and he ignored him. He said, I'm focused on a bigger job. I'm focused on a more optimal idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't like that. These, these guys are disbelievers. They may not even believe, right? He's a believer. Maybe he would have taken benefit from what you're, what you're hearing. Uh, sorry, what you, would, what you would have had to tell him. So the Prophet had got this audience with some of the leaders of the Quray. So it's a very, you know, a very interesting moment. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Now, every time after that, the, well, Many times after that, the Prophet ﷺ used to go to see Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum. He used to say to him, oh, you, you know, mashallah, you are the one. He used, to give him, he used to give him an audience. He said that you're the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me off about, you know, corrected me about or uh, gave me a warning about. So uh, tell me, do you have anything that you need done? So then the Prophet ﷺ would uh, always engage him like that. Uh, he was beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu because many times when they would go out and battle, they would actually make him the governor of Medina to look after it in place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he had left. So thereafter that he moves on to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala then discusses how human beings are ungrateful and sometimes they become tyrannical when they forget about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminds them uh, of his qudra and his power and all the things that he's created. So there's several different things that he talks about. And then towards the end is actually some very off-quoted, very profound verses at the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to depict the scene of the Day of Judgment again. So many surahs have this, okay? And he starts to depict the scenes of the Day of Judgment. And that is the ones where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that everybody's going to be occupied on that day with something that is going to distract him from everybody else. Right? And there's going to be some faces will be resplendent and shining on that day because, mashallah, they've got success. Book in the right hand. Those, there's going to be others who are going to be downcast. Right? And they're going to be in huge misery. But that is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is the day when a person will run from his brother, from his mother, from, from his father, and from his spouse, his wife. So don't expect anybody to help you on that day. Only the righteous will help you on that day. But that's going to be a severe day. And that is mentioned. Really, definitely something to reflect upon. Now we move on to the next surah, which is Surah At-Takweer. 
إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun has taqweer. Taqweer refers to the overthrowing of the sun almost, right? And وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts it off by saying, when this, this happens to the sun, when this is going to happen to the stars, when the mountains are going to be made to move and slide, and when the animals are going to just run, run wild, and so on. All of that discussion is there, the, 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 the oceans, the nufus, and uh, when that girl who was buried alive is going to be questioned, that on what basis, for which crime was she buried alive and killed? And when the book of deeds, when they're going to be spread open for, for you to see. And, and it starts off like that. There's quite a bit of discussion like that. And then after that, uh, it has 29 verses. Again, it's a Makki surah as well. There are many, you can say that this, uh, this surah, although they haven't split it up, but there's two themes in this surah. The first one is about all the events of the Day of Judgment, what's going to happen as the, day of, as the final hour approaches. All of that is discussed about the sun, the moon, the oceans and everything like that. And then after that, the second part, which is from verse 15 onwards, that's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning, um, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes three oaths here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ الْجَوَارِ الْكُنَّسِ وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا عَسْأَسِ وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسِ Morning, night and so on. That this, this is all about the Qur'an then. That these are the words of a noble messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions all of the characteristics about that. And what Allah is saying in this case is that you should not call him, uh, you, should not, you, you should not consider him to be mad. Right? Because... Right, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونِ In verse 22, he is, a, he is a clear prophet. And thereafter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the Prophet sallallahu is here, the messenger is here to actually teach crazy people what the right thing is. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going? This is a reminder for all the universes, especially from the, for those among you who want to remain straight. And you cannot will anything unless Allah, the Lord of the world, wills it. And another very important point, one thing that he mentions here, which is not seen everywhere, is وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ this Quran, is not the, not, uh, this Quran is not the words of an accursed devil and shaitan. This is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa kalam. Right? And when you read this, it's actually very profound. If you read it yourself, inshallah, which I expect you're going to be doing. The next surah is kind of a similar surah to surah, uh, surah al-Takweer, surah al-Infitar. St starts off in a similar way, talking about similar things that are going to happen on the Day of Judgment. Just like the Shams al it says, Is the sama un fatarat? Right? When the heavens will be cleaved asunder. Right? When, when they will break apart. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ in tatharat, When the stars will scatter. And the graves, they will basically release all of their interns. And, and that day, every soul will realize what it sent forth and what it, what it uh, left back. And then, beautiful. This part is just always beautiful. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem Alladhi khalaqaka fa sawaka fa adalak O insan, what is it that has deceived you from this noble Lord of yours, who created you, who made you balance, who stood you up, who gave you, who, who, uh, who uh, uh, created you in whatever form he wished? Right? What is it? What is it? It's just, again, the Quran is engaging, it's pleading in that sense that what is it? Come to success. So a lot of uh, Allah, so you could tell there's so much love in there for the human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that this is how I, what I created you for. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the angels. That upon them are the angels, the guardian angels. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he essentially splits up the people into two. Those who listen, don't, those who don't. And shows about what's going to happen to each one of them. The bounties of paradise are mentioned and the punishment of hell. Is, is stated, and by that the surah ends. Thereafter that, you've got suratul muttafifin. It's also a makki surah. Muttafifin means the defrauders. Those who used to defraud. Those who used to give less than what they were supposed to give. 
This is a Makki Surah, 36 verses. And again, there's some basic aqaid mentioned in here. The, uh, initially, it starts off with the, the scenes of the Day of Judgment, talking about the people of hellfire. Then the people of paradise is discussed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the illiyin and the sijjin. This is the surah in which the sijjin is mentioned and the illiyin. Illiyin is the highest of the high. And sijjin is the lowest of the low. Sijjin could also be that register in which all the lowest people's names are written. So when, a good, when it's a good person, we ask to be sent to the a'la illiyin, to the highest realms of the upper uh, illiyin from the concept of ulu, from the concept of highness. So... Uh, however, the, the surah begins with saying that woe and destruction be to those who defraud, muttafifin, those who give less than they're supposed to give. And then Allah makes it very clear that when they measure out for people, they do not give fully. Right? When they, when they ask for it, they want fully, but when they give, they don't give fully. Right? And uh, don't, Allah reminds them that don't these people think they're going to be resurrected for this mighty day when people are going to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right, and then the record books, so that's how the discussion of the paradise and hell comes about. Now, according to some scholars, uh, according to some mufassirin, the concept of mutafifin is not just giving less, like if somebody is buying a liter of you and you give them 0.9 of a liter. And when you ask from them, then you want 1.1 or 1.2 liters, why don't you give a bit more? Why are you being so stingy for? Like that. Right, you know when people are in the markets, they're putting things on a scale. So, Actually, Imam Qushayri, rahimahullah, one of the great Sufis of the past, he's actually saying that the tatfif is much more than just doing it in scale or measure. Right? There's a lot more than that. It, uh, w one aspect of defrauding is also that you conceal the defects of your car when you sell it. Right? And you don't tell people. Another one is that you're not just in your, in your behavior with people. Another one is that um, you, you want justice when it's to do with you, but you're not willing to give justice when it's to other people. Thereafter that, um, you do not love for your Muslim brother what you should love for yourself. Your Muslim brother and sister, you should love for them what you want. If you don't, then that means you're also doing muttafifin to a certain level. Thereafter that, if you, you, see, you see the defects of other people, but you do not see your own defects. That's total imbalance as well. So it's like a whole imbalance has been discussed here. The other thing is that you ask people for your rights. You make sure you go after them, but when it comes to you owing someone, you take time, you delay, and you mess around with it. So that's also a mutaffifin that could come. May Allah protect us from all of this. And all of, uh, essentially all of these people at some level will, be, um, will, will come under the purview of this warning. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, towards the end, he discusses as I said, he talks about paradise and hellfire and all the great things in paradise and the bad things in hellfire. Thereafter that, there were people, if you look at, in the ladina ajramu kanu min al amanu yadhakun, verse 29 to 30. Again, it's to give comfort to those people who are being mocked, meaning the Muslims who are being mocked because the disbelievers used to mock them a lot, especially the poorer people used to mock them a lot. That's why I think that whenever uh, they used to go past them, they used to laugh at them, they used to make fun of them, and they used to do all of these things. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what's going to happen to them. And by that the surah ends. The next one is suratul inshiqaq. Suratul inshiqaq. Inshiqaq means the splitting, the sundering or the splitting. Again, it's similar to idha shamsu kuwirat. It's idha sama'un shaqqat. When the heavens will split. Wa adhinat li rabbiha wa huqqat. وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُكَّتْ So that starts off 25 verses here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see, you have to remember that Surah Al-Muttafifin, Surah Al-Infitar, Surah Al-Inshiqaq, and Surah Al-Takwir, uh, this and the previous three surahs, they all, about, they all start off with a discussion of the Day of Judgment about what's going to happen, how the last day is going to come about, and the major cosmic changes, the very blatant cosmic changes that can't be avoided, they can't be ignored, they're going to affect everybody, that's what's going to happen, may Allah grant us goodness on that day. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes then three oaths, just like he did in, uh, in Surah Al-Takweer uh, as well, Allah says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالشَّفَقِ وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقِ وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا اتَّسَقِ لَتَرْكَبُنَّ طَبَقًا عَنْ طَبَقْ فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That you 
in the hereafter are going to go from one stage to the next. By those three oaths, Allah is saying that you're going to have to go through so many different trials on the day of judgment because of what you used to do in this world. However, those people who were good, right, they, that will not happen to them. They will be benefiting in the illa ladina amanu. The last verse saying, except those who those people who believe and do good deeds, for them is huge amounts of reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, if you look at verse 21, I'm not going to read it, but it says that if the Quran was recited to them, they would not prostrate. But they would actually belie it. That's a sajda verse. That is a sajda verse. And by that the surah ends. Suratul Buruj is next. Suratul Buruj is next. And Buruj refers to the mansions of the stars. Buruj, The heaven that is filled with the mansions of the stars. Now, if you want to understand what the mansions you could do a search on Wikipedia about the mansions, the solar mansions, the astronomical mansions. It's not talking about a big house. This is talking about the various different stars in the heavens and the various different planets and where they are at certain times in the year. And these were actually used for different purposes. In fact, to such a degree that some people even started saying that they have an efficacy of their own. And that's why Allah, the Prophet ﷺ has made it very clear that anybody who says it's raining today because such a star is in such a place and it's caused it, then that, that, is, that could lead you to kufr. All right? So that's mentioned. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears an oath by them. Because remember, they, the people of Makkah, the, the Arabs of that time, they knew very well what all of this meant. and they were, It was very significant for them. So Allah takes an oath by them and then about the day that's being um, awaited. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about a historical event. He said, Qutila ashabul ukhdu. This is the famous surah. It gives a lot of solace and comfort to people who are being persecuted today because it's referring to some persecutions of the past. Apparently, according to Sahih Muslim, it says that the, these people of the Ukhdud, these people of the trenches, it's referring to the people of the trenches. These were people who were persecuted in trenches with fire, right? They were thrown into these trenches with fire. That's what it's referring to. And apparently this is referring to one of the, one of the kings or one of the rulers of the Himyar, right? Which is towards the Yemen side. And uh, one of them was Dhu Nawas. And he, he was a mushrik, he was a pagan. And he must have killed 20,000 people by burning them alive in trenches. 20,000 20, people burning them alive. I think these people were believers of Isa alayhi salam. So they were, they were believers in Allah at that time. And he didn't like it. So because of his idol worship and so on. There's also in Sahih Muslim, there's also the story that's mentioned which this could refer to. about I, I can't go into the story, but it's a famous story of a magician of a hermit and of a young boy who basically used to go to the two and then eventually there was a showdown where the, the ruler told him that he cannot, uh, you know, he, he, he um, um, uh, where, where the ruler tried to show him up but mashallah because of a miracle that took place with him at that time there were thousands of people that became Muslim at his hand and because of that the, the ruler of the time, he didn't like it. He warned them and then he had them burnt alive. So he could refer to that. So that's verse 1 to 9 is a discussion about that. And um, there are so many incidents like this. They're, they're not the only. Those are the ones mentioned in the hadith. Otherwise, you've got so many incidents in which people were burnt alive. I mean, we've recently had the Rohingya in many of their villages. They were burnt alive. So this happens throughout history. And all of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that you get good out of it if that's your if that's what's going to happen there's a good place that you will go to because it's a very severe thing that has happened we we still have people doing this nowadays and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the believers from this but th this is still happening and while they don't necessarily throw them into a trench they throw them into other places which is similar i mean in fact today you've got a modern way of doing this the atom bombs on Hi uh, in hiroshima and nagasaki i mean isn't that they they, they got worse than burnt, right? You know, forget about being burnt and charred. I mean, this is just totally disfigured. And then to have people destroyed, uh, 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 debilitated for so many decades afterwards because of the poisonous gases and the toxicity of the area, right? There are the daisy cutters that they basically put down into places like Iraq and Afghanistan and just kill so many different people. So there's new ways of burning people alive. 
But those people can gain solace from and comfort, inshallah, from these verses that they, this is not new for them. And likewise, in so many other countries of the world where they just indiscriminately kill people like this and just tear them down to death. So that's why if you look at um, verse 10, um, that for these people it's going to be hellfire and everything, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about paradise for the people who do well and, and jannah and all the rest of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, In the batsha rabbika la shadeed. You know, when your, when your God comes down to grabbing somebody and taking somebody to account, it's going to be very, very severe. But then Allah also mentions that He is also, and this is the one place where Allah says, Huwal ghafoorul wadud. He's the forgiving and most intensely loving one. That's why the Christians cannot claim a monopoly on the loving God. Our God is also loving, has a name about it. He has a name which shows that. In fact, the whole Quran is just a manifestation of Allah's names. That's why I mentioned a few days ago that if you learn the names of Allah, then you study the Qur'an, you will actually see that it's just a manifestation of His various different names. You will understand the comprehensive entity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, Allah mentions a bit about Fir'aun and Thamud and talk, talks about what happened to them. And then Allah says, no, this is the Qur'an of Majid in the divine tablet. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this surah. Now we move on to surah to Tariq. Tariq, Tariq Yatruku generally talks about somebody who comes by and knocks at your door at night, right? A night visitor. Now this one is not a night visitor in that sense. This one is a night visitor every day. It's called, it's essentially, it's the night, uh, the night, uh, it's, it's talking about the heavens and the night when, when it comes in, or the morning star. So it's talking about that star that comes about at night. And again, this were, these were very real phenomena. For us, it's like, okay, what, do you, what, what does this even mean? But the people who live in the desert, the people who were connected to nature, they understand this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears an oath by that and says that every nafs, there is a protecting guardian angel over, over that nafs. There is an angel that is allotted for every single individual. And this could mean guardian in terms of protecting a person from, uh, from dangers. And it could also mean the ones that record, that record everything. The kiram and katibin as well, those. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how the human being is created. Then he says we can completely bring them back to life. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day when all the secrets will be revealed, the day of judgment. And then Allah again takes an oath by the sama, by the heavens and the earth and so on, and says that this Quran is qawlun fasl, is the distinguishing uh, speech. It makes everything very clear. There should be no doubt left after the Quran. It is not a joke. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلِ As Allah says, not a joke. They are going to plot but I'm going to plot. Give them some time. Right? It'll all be very clear soon. And that surah ends. Now we have surah... Uh, so the last part of that surah actually dealt with the justice of Allah, how all the justice will be prevailed. Now we move on to surah al-A'la. A'la, it's the first verse. Sabbi hisma rabbika al-A'la. Glorify... The name of your Lord Most High, Most Elevated, in every sense. Allah describes Himself first. And thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Prophet وسلم, to say, Don't worry about the Quran. Remember when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come with the revelation? The Prophet وسلم, used to really take a lot of pains to try to memorize it and try to repeat it after Jibreel alayhi salam so that he doesn't forget the surah and the wording. Allah says, سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى He did that in Surah Al-Qiyamah again here in Surah Al-A'la. We will get you to recite it. فَلَا تَنْسَى You will not forget it. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى Allah knows everything uh, of the hidden and the seen. وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى We will facilitate your path for the good. Whatever you do, فَذَكِّرْ in نَفَعَةِ الذِّكْرَى Remind, because reminders always benefits. At one time or the other, they will benefit, so keep your reminder. This is the da'wah we're talking about. The general theme in the Quran of giving da'wah, that's the only way you're going to be able to strengthen the faith. Increase it, strengthen it, and keep it strong. 
So really, this is something. Those who fear, they will take heed. They will take. But then, unfortunately, the people who are wretched, they will stay away from it. They will ignore it. They're going to enter the hellfire, the huge fire of hell. And then they're not going to die in there, and neither are they going to be fully alive either. Then Allah mentioned some beautiful verse, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Remember I explained falah before you, it's the ultimate success. It's only for the ones who purify himself. Purifies the demons of the heart. Otherwise if we don't, then in the hereafter we're just going to see what's in our heart. The punishments in hellfire that are waiting there are essentially what we are thinking in our hearts. That's why people like Ghazali and that, they mentioned that some people are going to be like pigs in the hereafter. Some are going to be like monkeys, which is essentially the inside of us in this world, which people can't see. They can only see outside. We look very good and smart and everything. It's the inside. That's going to become the outside. So Allah's not, وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Allah says, we didn't oppress them, they oppressed themselves. We're just making them how they were in the world. Right, the demons in the heart, they're just going to come out and be in the open and that it's going to be manifest, that's it. Right, so don't think of Allah as somebody who's just waiting with all sorts of punishment to punish you and you're like, you know, vulnerable. It's our own things that we've done. As Allah mentioned in numerous places, يَوْكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ and so in Surah, in Surah Bani Israel. Anyway, it's not the time to get into that discussion right now. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who purifies, the one who remembers the name of his, uh, of his Lord, who prays, again prays. But the problem is that you guys are giving preference to the life of this dunya. Even though the akhirah is superior and more enduring. And you know what? This is nothing new. This was in the previous scriptures, the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. This is a surah the Prophet used to recite on Jumu'ah. In the first rakat, and in the second rakat, the second surah, Hal Ataka Hadithul Ghashiyah, Surah Al Ghashiyah, which is the next one. So let us move on to Surah Al Ghashiyah, which is again a Makki surah. Every surah until now has been Makki, by the way. 26 verses in this one. And this is like Al Qari'ah, Al Haqqa. Al Ghashiyah is another name, another dis uh, description of, health, uh, of, of the Day of Judgment, has the news of the Ghashiyah, the overwhelming thing. The thing that should just overwhelm, the, that will just cover everything, Ghashiyah, right? Just overwhelm everything. That day there will be some faces that would be in reverent fear. Amilatun nasiba, tasla naran hamia. They're going to be in huge toil on that day, right? Tasla, they will enter into the hellfire. And they're going to be fed with all of this bad food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is neither going to, la yusmin, it will not make you fat, meaning it has no nourishment in there. And it will neither even satiate your. It will not even satiate your hunger. But then there's going to be other wujuhun yawma idhin na'ima. There's going to be, mashallah, there's going to be other faces. Now the reason why faces are mentioned is because it depicts, uh, it, it, it expresses how a person is feeling throughout. That's why Allah uses wujuh, wujuh, suratul qiyamah here in a number of other places to show the feeling of the face. The face has so many muscles on it this, that it has, I don't know, Possibility, I don't know how many thousands of possible different expressions that give away what a person is feeling. There's some people who can actually look at interaction between husband and wife, just the expressions on their faith, on the, sorry, expressions on their face, and they could probably predict how long these guys are going to last. Because the face is so revealing, and Allah mentions that in the Quran. And, but these people who are going to be in good, mashallah, lisa'ihara, they're going to be very happy about their efforts in this world. Not those who were who did so much work in the world thinking it was going to be good. They had no ikhlas, no sincerity. They didn't do it for the right reason. They did, did it for the wrong reason. Even they, they, they worked so hard, they're going to enter the hellfire. But those who worked hard for the right reason, they're going to be in these lofty paradises. And Allah says, you're not going to hear any, um, you're, not, you're not going to get disturbed there and you're going to have this, that, and other. All of that beautiful part is mentioned. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the people to just focus on four things about the camel. Because the camel is one of the amazing creations of Allah. And the desert Arabs knew that. The people in Arabia knew that. It doesn't need much water. It, it takes its own storage of water. It also eats a lot of the foliage or the plants that a lot of other animals would not eat. It can actually survive anywhere. It is the tank of the desert. So Allah says, look at how Allah created that. Look how it was created. Then Allah says, look at how Allah has raised the heavens and He doesn't fall down on you. The mountains, how they've been pegged and, and, and uh, put, uh, put onto the earth. And then the earth, how it's been spread. And again, فَذَكِّرْ Remind. Remind. Because you're just a reminder and you cannot impose on them. Right? Then after that, Allah talks about those who disbelieve and Allah will punish them. And Allah says, إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَّابَهُمْ 
they're all going to come back to us. Their return has to be to us, then upon us is their reckoning. So they're going to come to us to be sorted out and dealt with. Thereafter that we start Surah Al-Fajr. We've just done half a juice so far, right? Technically. Surah Al-Fajr is, the Fajr is the dawn, right? That's the swearing, uh, you know, throughout you've seen now Allah sworn oaths by so many phenomena in this last juice, right? So now he swears by the dawn, the ten nights, the shaf and the witr, right? The odd night and the even. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرِي هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَسَمٌ لِذِي حِجَرْ أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادٍ Surah Al-Fajr is a very awesome sounding surah with a very awesome message. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, didn't you see how, what your Lord did with the Ad and um, the Ad of Iram? They were the people of Iram, right? The Ad of Iram. And uh, nobody had been created like them before in the, in, the, in the towns and cities. Then the Thamud, right? And uh, the Fir'aun. And uh, they just caused so much corruption. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the whip of punishment. He sent down, that down to them. And... Uh, Allah subhanahu inna rabbaka labil mirsad. That your Lord is constantly vigilant in watch. He never, uh, uh, he's constantly watching. There's no moment when God does not, is, is unaware. Like everything, everybody and everything at once. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the human response to things. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives somebody something good, then he gets very excited, right? And... Um, he thinks that he's been honored and he says, my God has honored me. But then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, tests somebody, puts them in a bit of difficulty as this is a world of difficulty, then, and he constrains some of his sustenance and his wealth, <clears throat> he says, oh Allah has humiliated me immediately. As though Allah has got a contract with him that I must only do good for you. Meaning I must only give you good all the time, the way you see it. No, you... You don't honor the orphans, right? You don't encourage people to, to, to feed poor people, right? And rather you eat so much and consume so much yourself and you gather so much wealth yourself, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the day of judgment. And this sounds, you know, as I told you, the sound always helps. And then, that is the day that people will start taking heed, but what kind of lesson can be derived on that? It's not useful anymore. On that day then, nobody can punish like Allah. And there's nobody that can bind like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah, as this is always dissuasion and persuasion, after that frightening note, Allah then says, But O nafs al mutma'inna, O tranquil soul, you return to your Lord satisfaction and, and Allah being satisfied with you. Enter with my servants and enter my paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among them. That, then we move on to Surah Al Balad, which is a Makki surah, again, 20 verses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by. هذا البلد this vicinity مكة مكرمة وأنت حل بهذا البلد you've got absolute lawful right to go wherever you want in this in this city and then Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in verse four لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد this is the Quran telling us that Allah has created human beings to go through difficulty that's what it means that we've just created human beings to surmount difficulty after difficulty. The mother has to go to difficulty for our birth. The father just has enjoyment, right? Then after that, you know, he has to take part with, you know, all the sleepless lights, nights and everything like that. But the mother, and then the child comes, child has to grow up, go through many difficulties and so on. So that's it. Does this human think that nobody has, um, no, nobody has any power over him? He says, أَهْلَكْتُ مَالَ اللُّبَدَ Right? And then he says that I've spent so much wealth. Right? أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّمْ يَرَهُ أَحَدْ Does he think that nobody is watching him? Nobody has seen him? Haven't he given him two eyes, 
aren't we the ones who are given the eyes and the tongue and the lips and we guided, guided them in both ways. We guided them in paradise or hell. We've given you the guidance. This is Allah's bounty. But Aqaba is a high mountain pass. Generally, it's a difficult course to take through the mountain. Allah says, they were not willing to take the higher realms of the difficulties. Do you know what this Aqaba is? These are the following things. Uh, freeing slaves, right? That is part of that. Feeding when there's a need. Uh, the yatim, that especially if it's your relative, the orphan. And miskinan, the matraba, or the poor people. And then, so these are all the qualities of people who, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers to be the people who've taken the highest challenge of this world. Right? People who fed and uh, f uh, f uh, freed slaves. Then after that Allah says, and thereafter that, they are from among the people who believe and who mutually advise one another on patience and advise one another on mercy. Again, that is your Amul Ma'ruf and Nahi Al-Munkar is coming about there as well. Right? These are the people of the right. And the people who are disbelieve, uh, disbelieve in our verse, they're going to be the people of the left. And for them is the hellfire. So that, by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the, a lot of the disbelievers, they had a, lot of, uh, they had a lot of confidence in their wealth. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that now, it's not going to give you anything. Now the famous surah to Shams. This is the surah in which the most oaths are taken. I think there's 10 oaths in here, right? 15 verses, out of them most of it is an oath. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَشَى وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَا وَنَفْسِ وَمَا سَوَّهَا Right? Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath in all of these things or is it eight oaths? فَأَلْهَمَهَا Then Allah says the whole point of these oaths is فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَهَا Allah has inspired the human being the good and the bad. That's why most people nearly everybody will have a conscious in their mind. Shouldn't really be doing that. Let me just do it. The pleasure is too much. The attraction is too much. Right? That's what everybody goes through in their minds. So Allah says, we've inspired them. It's in their heart. Right? They know it. But the one who's going to receive that falah, that ultimate success is the one who purifies the heart, removes it of all those demons so that when our inside is depicted outside in the world, inshallah we'll be happy. God, وقد, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who do not purify it and how they're going to be destroyed. Then Allah mentions an event of the Thamud. Right? How they did not listen and they killed the, the she camel. And then after that, Fadam Dama Alayhim Rabbuhum Bidam Bihim Fasawaha. Just that Fadam Dama Alayhim Rabbuhum. Right? And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished them off. Thereafter that Surah Al Layl. This is so was Shams. Shams is the sun by the sun. And the next one was Layl by the night. That's the oath is taken by the night. And Surah Al-Balad, Balad just means the vicinity, the city, referring to the city of Makkah. I forgot to translate that name for you, right? And now let's go to the Surah 92, which is Surah Al-Layl, which is also a Makki Surah. And apparently, uh, what's interesting, Wal-Layl was probably the ninth Surah to be revealed, most likely. Whereas Wal-Shams was 26. Very similar. Wal-Layl idha yaksha, wal-Nahari idha tajalla, wa ma khalaqa al-dhakara wal-unsa, inna sa'yakum lashatta. Allah takes all of these oaths and then he says that, you know, all of this effort that you make, the, it sometimes all just gets dispersed, right? Or sometimes you get different results from the different things that you do. Some people have taqwa, some people are wretched, some people are believers, some people are disbelievers. Some people are spending in the path of Allah, some people are withholding from the path of Allah. Some people are afraid and have reverent fear of Allah. Some people are like, I got no fear, I'm completely safe. Allah's not going to do anything to me. Right? Sometimes, some people, they're talking well and they're advising other people of good and they are confirming the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people are denying it. So whatever way, Allah is saying that whatever effort, sa'i, sa'i means effort, whatever effort you do, make sure it's the right effort because then Allah explains that uh, from uh, verse... Eight and onwards, the one who's tight and stingy and who thinks he's too wealthy and he denies the good, uh, then we're going to facilitate the difficult path for him and his wealth will not help him 
when he you know uh, uh, when he's in need and upon us is the guidance when wa in al akhirata wa in wa in lana al akhirata wal ula actually before that allah mentions that the person who gives in the path of allah who has taqwa and who uh, who confirms the goodness and truth then we're going to make the path easy for them that's why it shows that you have to try first then allah will make it easy a lot of people think it's not easy for me so i can't be on the right track i can't change my ways you have to make the first effort there may be some difficulty you cross a few mountains allah will make it easy for you afterwards then you'll be very confident and there'll be no problem afterwards allah will make it easy inshallah so thereafter Allah talks, talks about the hellfire and who's going to enter it, the wretched one. And then Allah says beautifully, The one who's most righteous will be kept away from it. The one who used to give his wealth to be purified. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And they will be satisfied eventually. Now we move on to Surah Al-Duha. Surah Al-Duha is a Makki Surah, 11 verses. This I could talk about for an hour. Just Surah Al-Duha because the message is extremely profound. This Surah and the next Surah, they actually seem to have come down together in similar. 11 and 12, they were 11 and 12 to be revealed early on in Mecca. Right? And it's to give a lot of comfort to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the, 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 the wahi had stopped for like two years or something, a long time. So people started mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that has your shaitan abandoned you? So... Finally, when the wahi came down, Allah says, What duha? Now, again, this is an oath by the dawn. Your Lord has not abandoned you. Right? And remember, the hereafter is superior to you, or the later, your later uh, things that will happen will be much more superior to you than now. And Allah will give you and He will make you satisfied. So you'll be satisfied about your ummah, you'll be satisfied about whatever you want. There's huge. Discussions on that, mashallah. A lot of promises in there. Then Allah mentions three things to him. And this, is, this surah is an antidote. I think I've got some lectures on this as well. right? This is an antidote to depression, to grief, and all of that. It's, there's a big, big, big antidote to it. Didn't we find you as an orphan? And then, you, uh, th then basically we looked after you. Didn't we find you off the course? And then we guided you. Didn't we uh, find you in need? And we enriched you. So then the Prophet ﷺ is told to do three things. He's saying that if it's an orphan, you, you must never repel orphans. You must never repel people who come to ask who I need. And you need to proclaim the benefits of your Lord. So that's why they say that, and there's a lot of people like that who've got grief, who've, uh, who've dealt with a lot of grievous issues. So the suggestion for them is go and help others. Go and take part in some other good work. And mashallah, that really helps so, uh, and then Allah says, re, re, uh, uh, proclaim the bounties of your Lord. So all the positives that have happened to you, proclaim them. That will take the negativity out of you. Because a lot of people are just suffering psychologically. They, they're su suffering the negativity of a few events in their life. So this is a huge surah. And the next surah, Surah Al-Inshirah. Right? So as I, as I said to you, the duha just means the morning hours. It means the morning, right? Whereas Surah Al-Inshirah, Alam Nashrah, it means... Inshirah means expansion of the chest. So Allah is saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't we expand your chest for you? And we removed the burden from you. The one that was breaking your back, the one that was giving you a lot of burden, and we elevated your mansion. That's why today, at least in London, many other cities around the world, while we can't go inside the masjid to pray, right? The adhans are out in the street and people are just thoroughly enjoying it. MashaAllah, you know, even uh, atheists are enjoying it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that, remember, with every difficulty will come ease. Because difficulty is like an oil, and then there has to come a down, or it, the other way around. They're always going to have to, with every difficulty come, comes ease. These surah, two surahs bring about a lot of comfort for people if they would just think about it. Then the final thing that's mentioned is here is, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you finish, then make an effort. That's a simple literal translation. means when you do your daytime tasks, Right? In order now to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to boost your spirituality and your connection with Allah, you need to make an effort in your tahajjud and in your night vigils. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Because then you need, to, you, you, need to, uh, you, you, you need to make an effort towards your Lord. Um, that was really, really brief. But otherwise, these two surahs could take over an hour as I mentioned. So, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with every difficulty comes ease. It was the responsibility of the Prophet ﷺ that he do this extra 
ibadat at night, which he used to, he didn't have to do it the whole night, but he used to take a lot of pleasure in doing so. May Allah give us pleasure as well in that. Thereafter that, the next story is Surah to teen Wa teeni wa zaytun wa turisini. Allah again takes an oath here. This, is, this chapter is a chapter of oaths. So Allah is now swearing by the fig and the olive. And, you know, the tafsirs will talk about the, the various different wisdoms behind that and the benefits behind that. This is not the time, but everybody knows the benefits of the fig and the benefit of olive and olive oil. Waturi sinin and the Mount Sinai. Wahad al baladi lamin and this uh, city of safety. All right. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ This surah is called Surah Tutin because it talks about the fig, right? And it has eight, eight verses only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about creating the human being in an honorable way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He's created you in the best stature, best form and position among all human beings. You, walk, you do not walk on all fours, you work, walk upright, you've got full use of all of your faculties, all of your limbs, you subjugate other animals, and so on, all of that. Not just from that, but from an aqli, uh, from, from an intellectual perspective, from a physical perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautified the human being. Thereafter that, he returns you to the lowest of the low. That could refer to either physical decrepitude at the end of life, except for those who Allah protects from doing that. Or he could also refer to basically people who go crazy and who don't do the right thing, Right? and who become worse than animals. So he could refer to both of those things, saying that except those who, people who believe and do good deeds, for them is huge amounts of reward. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, talking about those who deny the day of judgment, isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most judging of all judges? Like he, he has the most proficient ability to judge. Thereafter that, we, start, we finally reach the first surah to be revealed of the Qur'an, which is 96 in its, in its order in the Qur'an, but chronologically it was the first surah. And that is surah Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq. Surah Al-Alaq. It's called Alaq because that's referring to the clot from which the human being was made. So that it was called uh, Alaq, as opposed to Surah Al-Qalam because we already had a Surah Al-Qalam. Khalaq al insan min Alaq, Iqra wa Rabbuka Al-Akram. In this surah, there are several things that are mentioned in here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the wisdom in the creation of the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about writing and recitation and that those are the means for a person's advancement in the world, education, illumination. And uh, the person who does that, they're going to be the most noble of people, right? Those who have education, that's exactly the way we see it. People respect people with knowledge. It's just something in your heart that makes you do that. That's within the psyche and the nature of the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the fact that if you've got kalla innal insana layatga, people become tyrannical because they anra'ahu staghna, because they think that they've been enriched, they've got a lot of wealth. But inna ila rabbika ruja, your return is going to be to Allah. And have you seen the person who. Um, stops a person from praying. This is talking about one of the leaders of Makkah who used to come and stop the Prophet ﷺ and others from praying. Doesn't he know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking? If he doesn't stop, then we're going to really grab him. Right? We're going to severely punish him. And then Allah says, do not obey any of these people. Right? And you prostrate to Allah and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is referring to Abu Jahl. He's the fear of this ummah. Because he, he, he did various things to try to stop the Prophet sallallahu from praying. Until one day Fatima radiallahu told him off as well. Right? But he was, he was just crazy. He died very early on. Right? One of the leaders of Makkah that had to die earlier on. The next one is Surah Al-Qadr. Many people translate this as power, the night of power. But it's also the night of decree. Qadr. And that's what it refers to. That, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll know this surah anyway because you've probably heard it so many times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this beautiful Quran, right, in the night of Qadr. Do you understand what this night of Qadr is, Allah says? You know, we're not just mentioning it arbitrarily. There's a night of Qadr, it's superior to a thousand months. May Allah give us the night of Qadr worship, whichever it was. May Allah give us and accept it. 
And uh, so one thing is that the Quran is revealed in there. Number two, it's superior to a thousand months, right? Number, which is about 93 years or something. And then number three, it is a night in which the angels just descend with just events of mercy. So there's a lot of mercy in that night. So some people actually look out for this and they determine it accordingly, right? Uh, this year, I don't know, somebody mentioned it was on the, they thought it was on the 21st, but people could see it differently. Wallahu a'lam. Right, now let's move on to the next surah. Right, remember this was supposed to be a summarized tafsir, so I know there's a lot more events, and he, some of you will actually know the tafsirs and anything. Why didn't you mention this point or that point? Well, you know, we can only mention certain select points, whatever Allah puts in our heart, right? So we leave it to Allah. Surah Al Bayyina, the clear proof. This is the chapter of the clear proof. Now, we finally we get to a Madani surah. Pretty much all, all of these have been Makkan surahs until now. Now we get to a Madinan surah. But it still has the color of the Makki surahs in here. Right? So this one is a slightly longer one towards the end. It has uh, eight verses, but they're kind of relatively slightly longer verses. And the discussion here is that it starts off with a discussion about the Yahud of Medina Munawwara. They were waiting for the new prophet because they knew it was going to come in the oasis. That was their book had mentioned. That. That's why it had settled in Medina Munawwara. Then the prophet came. But then the reason they rejected him is because he's not from the Banu Israel. Right? Literally. And this is not a joke. I mean, this is serious. We've got local, locally, some uh, of our uh, Jewish brothers. We've had meetings with them, especially when uh, some of our Mufti Palampuri, when he came from India, they had a meeting as well. And clearly there's some among them who've mentioned that we completely understand Islam is um, uh, that the Prophet Muhammad was a true prophet. They've actually mentioned that very clearly, but we can't because he's not our prophet. He's not from the Bani Israel. So that's where they've gotten stuck with this. Right? That he must have been from the Bani Israel. Right? So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the beginning. Um, that even though the clear sign came, Rasulun min Allah, yetlu suhufan mutahara. But they decided to deny that. And even though, then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, several other points in there about uh, they, all they were told to do is to worship Allah and making the deen sincere for Him, you know, worshiping just one God, establishing the prayer, giving zakat, and that is the straight deen. Uh, then Allah mentions what's going to happen to the people of disbelief and then he mentions what's going to happen to the people of paradise. And here, a lot of people make the mistake. Because after he mentions disbelief, he says, sharrul bariya. They're the worst of creation. Then he talks about the people who believe and do good deeds and says, these are the best of creation. Sometimes in Salat, people mix them up and the Salat could break because of that. Then Allah mentions the jaza and the recompense for this. Then Allah mentions Allah is satisfied with the good people and they're satisfied with him. And that is, they're the ones who uh, fear their Lord. So by that, this ends. Thereafter that we have the Suratul, Suratul Zilzal. Zilzal refers to the earthly quake, an earthquake, right? Shaking of the earth. And this is referring to the Day of Judgment, uh, the, 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 the last moment. When the earth will be sh shook severely. And then the earth will reveal all of its riches, burden, uh, um, um, whatever is enclosed within it. And the insan is going to say, what happened to it? That's the day. All the database of the earth is going to reveal itself. You know, the chips or whatever Allah has, the future proof chips that Allah has put in there, right? It's going to reveal all of that information about this person did this. That's why we're saying that when you come to a masjid, you should pray in different places so that all of those places will bear, uh, will bear testimony for you. And thanks our, may Allah thank our producer here who puts me in different places. I come in and he set it up in different places so that inshallah all of these different parts of this masjid will testify inshallah to the Quran being uh, studied in these places. And may that be uh, for us inshallah in the hereafter uh, a good thing inshallah. Uh, and why is the, uh, the earth going to reveal its information? Because your Lord has inspired it to do so. And that day is people are going to be in different groups, right? So that they can be shown their deeds. And Allah says, MashaAllah, you will know this because most people know these surahs. The, if you've done an infinitesimally small amount of good, you will see it. Like even the smallest dharra, 
the smallest thing you can think of. Some people have explained this as, you know, where in a building, you know, inside, and there's a shaft of light, sunlight coming through. And in that sunlight, you can actually see these very small specks, which you can't, they're there right now, but I can't see them. You can only see them when there's, there's a shaft of light. These small specks, very tiny, minute. That's a dharra, according to one understanding. So an infinitesimally small particle, whatever that is, whatever you've done of good, you will see it. It, record, it records everything. And if it's evil, you'll see that as well. It'll be in front of you. Then it's up to Allah. Allah help us. Thereafter that, Surah Al-Adiyat. Adiyat, this is similar to Wadhariyat. It's referring to horses at this time, the charging horses. Well, Adi. And again, if you understood Arabic, the, 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 the awesomeness this creates. Well, Adiyati Dabha, Fal Muriyati Qadha, Fal Mughirati Subha. Those that come and attack in the mornings. Now for the Arabs who used to have these tribal things and they used to use their horses in this way, this, you know, is going to be a very awesome scene. فَأَثَرْنَ بِهِ نَقْعَ فَوَسَطْنَ بِهِ جَمْعَ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُوتِ وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٍ All of those oaths uh, regarding these charging horses, right, uh, is being taken to show that the insan is kanud. It's not a very common term used. Kanud means ungrateful, ingratitude, right? Very, the insan is not grateful. And we're witness to him, he loves good. Now Allah is revealing all of this towards the end now. The earth was mentioned about revealing all of its information. That's one database. Now here it's saying, that when people will come out of their graves, وَحُسِّلَ مَا فِي sudur, And when everything in the hearts will be revealed. That's another database. And your, your Lord will be full, fully knowledgeable about that. Now Allah has the knowledge. Now if He said, I know you did this, you could say, you could protest. But the evidence is going to be from our angels, from the ground, from our limbs. We, 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 we read um, uh, the verses about person telling, you know, Mali, you know, what, what, is, what is wrong with you? Why are you bearing witness against us? And then, of course, the hearts. So, there's so many proofs on that day. Allah help us. Surah Al-Qari'ah is the next surah. Al-Qari'ah is another name for the day of judgment, just like Al-Waqi'ah was. Al-Qari'ah means Qara'ah, the calamity. You could say it's a calamity. mal qariah do you understand what this calamity is? Yawma yakunu nasu kal farash. It's a small surah, but the scene it depicts, the day when people will become just like spread flying uh, uh, flies, right? Forget the people, the mountains will become like cotton wool, right? Just spread around, dispersed, just floating around. And then Allah says, on that day, the one whose scale will be weighty, He's going to be in, mashallah, very satisfactory life he'll gain after that. And those whose scale is low, they don't have too many good deeds to show, then his place is the hellfire. Do you know what that is? It's this burning hellfire. It's the burning jahannam. jahannam. That was, uh, th th that is surah, uh, that has only 11 verses and that's surah number 101. So alhamdulillah we've got 13 surahs left. And um, that was the 30th one to be revealed. Surah Al-Takathur, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, competing with one another for abundance, for excess, for extra piling up, competition has, dis, has, uh, has, dis, uh, has distracted you. It's a reality. Allah has just started off. Can you see how every surah starts with something new? Al-Hakum Al-Takathur. Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir. And that's what you're going to be competing uh, that is what you're going to be competing with until you get to the graves. And as the hadith mentions it very clearly, that the only thing that's going to fill the stomach or the greed of a person is the soil of his, greed, of his grave. Otherwise, until then, you just want more and more and more. As I mentioned to you, the people who are wealthy, their money is always invested. They just always, then their money is never given to anybody else. It's always for the purpose of investment and for to, to make more and more and more. Right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will soon know you will certainly, you know, you will soon know. You'll know it very clearly with full certainty and knowledge. You will see the hellfire. 
you will see it with you know your with with the eye of certainty and then after that you're going to be asked about every question sorry every bounty every bounty of yours will be questioned every penny that you received and it's just like the person who has more he has to fill in more tax forms and those who have less they don't have to do much tax filing that's the same thing on the day of judgment you're going to be asked everything we ask allah that give us wealth but give us salama and give us give us goodness and righteousness with our wealth because the prophet ﷺ has said that how wonderful is pure wealth in the in the possession of a righteous person or whatever the prophet or however the prophet ﷺ said it thereafter that's that surah al asr now this is a one of the shortest verse, uh, surahs in the quran with in the which we're coming to asr means the time the declining day or time in general the declining life and it is a very powerful surah even though it's just got three verses i'll translate it for you by the time human being is in loss like that is the first statement just humans are in loss okay except so it shows that a majority are going to be in loss except those who believe who do good deeds and who mutually advise and counsel one another on the truth and of patience Amr al-Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar, right, is included in there. And that's why some scholars, like Imam Shafi has said, that if a person only, openly, clearly, objectively, with an open, conscious heart, just pondered over one surah, this one, it would be sufficient for his salvation. Because when you think about this, we don't have the time to give a lecture on this right now, but you need these four qualities. May Allah give us this quality and may Allah not allow us to be in loss and understand the importance of time as well. Thereafter, the next one is a Makki surah again, Surah Humaza. Right? Aside from Bayyina, everything has been Makki. Actually, no, there were two surahs which were Madani. I forgot to mention the other one, Ida Zul Zilatil Ardu Zilzalaha, was also a Madani surah. Follows Lam Yakun in Ladina Kavar Suratul Bayyina. They're both Madani ones in the midst of all of these. But even in Azul, you never thought it was a Madani surah. Right? It was very Makki themed. Now, this next surah is an interesting surah. It's Wailul Likulli Humazati Lumaza. Humaza means a slanderer, the backbiter. So, hums and lums, the back, someone who openly says things to you and somebody who says it behind your back. So, he's both backbiting. One of them means a backbiter, the other one who comes and says bad things in your face. So he's saying, destruction be to every person like that who then gathers wealth together and counts it and he thinks that his wealth is going to leave him forever. He's going to let him uh, stay alive forever. No, he's going to be thrown into the hellfire. And do you know what this hutama is? It's the burning hellfire. Right? When people have a lot of their wealth, they feel they get this false sense of security and confidence with it. That's very detrimental. That's why if you've got wealth, just make sure you're humble. Otherwise, that wealth will just take you for a ride. Right? And you need to fill your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why there's a famous Urdu poem, if you'll allow me. Right? You're stuffing your heart with the love of wealth and position. When, when can it have some room to have the love of the possessor of majesty, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar. Right, now we start Surah Al-Feel. Surah Al-Feel and Surah Quraysh, one was probably the 19th verse to be revealed, the 19th surah, and the other one is the 29th surah. They are 105 and 106 in the order of the Qur'an. But they were early. And the first one is about telling the people of Makkah that, look, don't you understand? Allah is saying a few things in here. Because feel means the elephant, okay? Feel means elephant. And this is referring to the event of Abraha when he, was dis when he came with the elephants. And he came with a huge army from Sana'a in Yemen. He was the governor there, right? He was the governor there. He didn't like it that a place of worship he'd built was uh, soiled by a person from Makkah Mukarrama. And that's why 
because it was like a challenge to Kaaba, so they didn't like it, so they went and soiled it. So then he came with this huge army, about 7,000 people. Um, I don't think the Arabia had seen an army that big. And he bought animals, uh, sorry, he bought elephants, and those elephants just frightened everything. Because nobody's seen anything like it. There are no elephants in, in Arabia. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they all retreated. All the Meccans retreated. Just Ab Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ, went up to him and he says, Look, I want to talk to you about my camels. He says, um, Why aren't you worried about the Kaaba? Why are you worried about your animals? He was very brave enough to go and find him on the way. He says, Look, I'm just going to ask you about save, you know, let my animals go. He says, Why aren't you worried about the house of Allah? He says, Right? I'm in charge of my camels. But the house, Allah is in charge of that. He's going to protect it. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, as Allah says here, أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيْرًا ababil. Sent him basically a early bombs. Right? Not with uh, drones. These were living animals. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's living birds bring about bombs that basically were named for each individual and it finished them off. بِحِجَارَةٍ مِّن سِجِّيلٍ فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَأَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ Abraha also, he contracted a problem and on his way back he died as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him of that. And remember, that was the year when the Prophet was born. So it's very significant to say that don't worry, your Lord will help you if you, if you do the right thing. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, we have Surah to Quraysh, obviously referring to the Quraysh. fi Quraysh. This is talking about some bounties and some gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to the Quraysh. Numerous gifts, but it's talking about a few of them here. One of them is that they would be able to travel. They, had, they were tradespeople. They were merchants. So in summer, when it was good, they could travel north. Right? This was one of their main ways of income. This was one of their main ways of income. And so in the, in the hot days, they would go north. In the cold days, they would go south because it's probably closer to the equator, so it would be better there. And Allah had given them safety, that uh, Allah had given them security and they used to make profits. So they were well off in that sense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah, uh, Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically fed them so they don't have to suffer from hunger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also protected them from fear. So these are again bounties on them because they had the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there as well. And this is just to teach them that you should stop فَلْيَعْبُدُوا The main message in here is verse 3 فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ They should worship the Lord of this house because He's the one who protected you. And He's the one who set all of this up for you. So they had safety. And number two, they had this wonderful business, you know, this business network and that is also set up. Again, this is another one of those surahs. It sounds wonderful when you're in the haram in Mecca and, they, and the imam recites this surah. Because it's just talking about the people there. It's talking about رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ They should worship the Lord of this house. Okay, let us, we can't take it easy. We need to carry on. So it's like when we go over time, then I start taking it easy. Right? On borrowed time. Surah Al-Ma'oon. Surah Al-Ma'oon. Ma'oon refers to the basic, basic things like a bit of salt. Your neighbor comes, can I borrow a bit of salt please? You know, can I borrow a few tea bags? That's Ma'oon. Can you imagine anybody saying, no, I don't have any salt for you? No, I can't give you some sugar? No, I can't give you a hand? Something that is so easy. Can you just lend me a hand quickly, please? No, no, I can't do that. That's ma'oon. Why? Because this surah is really interesting. While it's a makki surah, all of these surahs are makki so far, right? Still, there's an ikhtilaf about whether it's fully makki or the second half is madani. Why? Because Allah says that, do you see the, the one who denies the hereafter? Right? And um, he's the one who also reject, uh, re repels uh, the orphans and he does not encourage people to feed the miskin and the poor person. That, that much is mentioned. So that apparently is, could be speaking about either As ibn Wa'il or this Walid ibn Khalid ibn Walid's father, Walid ibn Utbah, and or a few of the other leaders who used to do these bad things. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so destruction be to those worshippers, to those performers of prayer who are lazy in their performance of prayer or who are negligent in their performance of prayer who do it for show right and they also prevent these basic things from other people like they're, they're stingy as well 
So this could either refer to people who don't pray and they should be praying, or it refers to those people who pray but pray to show off or come at the last minute uh, because the munafiqin had to be praying to show that they were believers or to demonstrate they're be believers. So they would just lounge around at the back or they'd come late. And today, many of us do that. There's always a defense line at the end when the salat finishes. Sometimes I'm in it as well. Right? There's a defense line, right? Because that stops anybody from going back because they're all still praying. Right? That's why I call it the defense line. Thereafter that, the next surah, surah number 108 is, Inna a'tayna kal Surah al-Kawthar. Kawthar has several meanings. When it means abundant good. So we have given you abundant good. It could be taken literally like that because Allah has given, again, this is addressed to the Prophet ﷺ directly. We've given you abundant good. It could also refer to the kawthar, which is the hawd, the, the feeding, the, the, the watering pool, right, which is outside of paradise. But there's also a, a nahrul kawthar in paradise, which says supplies this watering pool outside. That's why this one is called hawdul kawthar. That's called the nahrul kawthar the lake or stream of Kothar inside paradise and the pool of Kothar is outside. So Allah is saying, either I've given you that or he's saying, I've given you a lot of good or it could be both of them. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرْ Don't worry about it because the one who criticizes you and again, this refers to people like As ibn Wail and others and uh, Walid ibn Utba and other people who used to criticize him and say that the Prophet ﷺ is going to be left without children, without a male offspring. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't worry, the one who criticizes you, he's going to be left like that. That's why um, all that person's children became Muslim and he was basically left without anything. Thereafter that, the next surah is again a very powerful surah, it's surah al-kafirun, right? Kafirun, the disbelievers, this is the surah of disbelief because this is just very clear cut. Qul ya al kafirun, right? O oh, people who are disbelievers, I'm not going to worship what you worship and you're not going to worship what I worship. This is like where it became very distinguished that you can't join the two religions together. The backdrop of this surah is that there was a, the, the kuffar of Quraysh, they came and they said to him that let's have an agreement. One year you will worship our, our gods and then the other year we'll worship your gods. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, uh, reveals this surah and makes it completely distinct. Right? I'm not going to worship what you worship. You will not worship what I worship unless you give up your faith. For you is your faith and for me is my faith. Right? Now, this is the surah of exoneration from kufr. That's why we're told to recite it, you know, at different times. Because you're just, ex you're just reaffirming that, no, I'm truly faithful and I don't do anything to do with disbelief. And this shows that there was no way to have that kind of a treaty. I mean, the Prophet wouldn't have done it anyway, but it was just made it very clear and the Prophet ﷺ read it to them. Thereafter, I surah to Nasr. Now here, this is another Madani surah finally. Right, the few Madani surahs, Madinan surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it means victory. Nasr, assistance and victory. And this is referring to, after surah to Al-Fat, this is surah to Nasr. Remember there, there was the promise that you will, you, you, you know, this is a victory for you, the Hudaybiyah peace treaty. This one is where you've entered Makkah Mukarramah, and Allah says, when the assistance of Allah came and the conquest came and you saw the people entering into the deen of Allah in droves, in groups, because remember they were waiting to see what's going to happen to Makkah because they had a lot of respect for Makkah. And Makkah had not fallen yet. They had not become Muslim yet. When the Prophet ﷺ just walked in and everything became fine, they just entered Islam in thousands, in droves, in tribes. So again, a victory. But again, the Prophet ﷺ is being told, you glorify the praise of your Lord and seek forgiveness. He is off repenting. And that is when this surah came down, the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned that this is also the news of my passing. And Abu Bakr understood that. And he started weeping. Right, the next surah is the sixth surah to be revealed. So very early surah again, it's called Surah Al-Lahab. Lahab means the flame. And the reason it's called Surah Al-Lahab is because this is talking about Abu Lahab. His name was actually Abdul Uzza or Abdul Kaaba or something like that. Uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, like real uncle, father's brother, but enemy of Islam. He was very handsome. He was like, he had like, uh, 
rosy cheeks or something, so very white and rosy, and very arrogant about that. So that's why they call him Abu Lahab, the father of the flame. It was like a positive uh, at that time, but he really became the father of the flame. While he's alive, this surah came down. This is a real strange philosophical conundrum, right? That this, and his wife, Ummu Jamil, her name was, right? Ummu Jamil, she used to cause hassle to the Prophet as well. They just hated him. So while they're alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the hand of Abu Lahab is destroyed. His wealth is not to help him in any way, nor what he earns. He will enter the hellfire. Now he's alive when this is coming down. Imagine if he became Muslim. What would have happened? But that's the thing. Allah is saying, I mean, this is the one place in the Quran where it's like a miracle that he's not going to believe. He may have turned around and said, look, I believe now. But ha ha ha. But then that would have been he's still disbelieved. Right? But there are other answers to this. There are other ways of looking at this. Because there are verses in the Quran that were made to be forgotten and, and abrogated. So Allah could have made something abrogated. But, but this is, this is going to be the reality. This is the reality and that is what we have right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him. Thereafter, the next surah is one of the most powerful surahs in the Quran. Surah Al-Ikhlas. That is beloved to everybody. It's the surah of... They call it Surah Al-Ikhlas. Because surah of sincerity. Because they're saying, say that he is Allah, the one. Allah, the self-subsisting who does not beget nor is he begotten, and he has no partner. Now, there is so much tafsir of this, that this is talking about various different types of uh, tawheed that you need to uh, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need only, you know, you need to not ascribe any partners with him. This is an affirmation of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are numerous virtues of this. There's one person who used to just read Surah Al-Ikhlas all the time in his salat. No other surah, just that. Prophet Sallallahu he said, I love this surah. I love this surah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, it's fine for him to do that. Thereafter that we have Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. In terms of revelation, they, that, they, they seem to be the 20 and 21st surahs because all of these are Makki again. After Ida Ja and Asrullah wal Fat, these are all Makki surahs. Right? So Surah Al-Falaq means the daybreak. Falaq. Now, they're both kind of they, they kind of contrast one another. They're both mu'awwidat, meaning they're both there for seeking refuge in Allah. That's why the Prophet wasallam said that this is a huge treasure that has come down, uh, f- uh, uh, you know, a huge khair that has come down uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And it's also seeking refuge from several different things. So if you look carefully at Kul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, it's saying, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak from every... So in this surah, only one thing is being invoked, the Lord of daybreak, that's it, right? To seek protection from the evil of everything he's created and from the night when it covers everything in darkness because remember it's at night time when a lot of the robberies take place a lot of the spells are done and the sorcery is uh, is set up and all of that that's why at night time people just really hate night time sometimes it's nightmares and things and also from the evil of those who blow into the knots and from the evil of the envious ones when they exercise their envy so one Invoking one uh, characteristic of Allah to seek protection from four things. These are all worldly things. They're all physical things. Because if an envious person is going to do something, he's going to do something to you physically. You're going to feel something. Likewise, nighttime is going to physically affect you. And, and likewise, any evil is created like poisonous animals or anything else. All of that. Now, if you look at Qulaqtu bi Rabbin Nas. And Nas just means people. So, because Allah says, say that I seek refuge in the Lord of the people. Now here, it's not just one characteristic mention. It's Lord of the people, Malikin Nas, the sovereign of the people, the king of the people, Ilahin Nas, and the Lord of the people. Three things mentioned. Right? The first one only had one thing mentioned, and four things were sought refuge from. Here, Allah is telling you to invoke three of his characteristics, three ways, and then he's only seeking refuge from one thing. مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ 
invoke Allah in these three ways to seek protection from the evil of the one who whispers and then retreats the one who whispers into the heart of the people from among the jinn or the human being because that's a bigger problem that's why three characteristics of Allah has to be invoked for this one whereas for the other worldly things one characteristic of Allah is just showing that they're, they're, this is the bigger issue and one of the reasons is that if we do have a problem in the first four first four issues that I mentioned Surah Al-Falaq then th that may trouble us in our life but in the hereafter because of the suffering will be fine because of the patience and so on but if somebody the whispering is worse it might sound much more mundane right but it's worse because if that messes up of our deen then it means we're going to suffer in the hereafter as well that's why that's a bigger thing to worry about i don't know if you've ever heard the tafsir like that but today there are there is a shaitan right in a shaitan alakum aduwum mubin allah says shaitan is your clear enemy and you're saying like how is he clear He's so clear that it's all in your heart. You know the shaitan is playing up when you're doing things. But we veil it, we cover it. It's again that same thing about the heart. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be careful because there are so many TV shows, radio shows, media that is constantly whispering into people's hearts of trying to corrupt their faith, trying to give them doubt in their faith, Islamophobic ideas. Right, your prophet was like this and your prophet was like that. Na'udhu billah. Your deen is backwards. Your deen is ancient. Your deen is not up to scratch. And there's unfortunately people who just don't have the knowledge of the Quran who start feeling like, hey, maybe it is the case. Because we have a few bad apples who do weird things. And that's why it's really important to understand also these are the two surahs that should be, not these two, but all three, the last three, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Nas, should be recited before going to sleep. It was one of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha mentions as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that uh, until then, he used to use other formulas to seek protection. After these two surahs came down, he said this is the most effective. There's a lot more tafsir. We stop here just as a roundup. Uh, over the course of the tafsir, we've mentioned several different things like Allah's insistence on Amr al-Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar on taqwa, muttaqeen, muttaqeen was everywhere. These are th some things which have stood out, all right? Just quickly, very quickly. I don't want to take too much time in the summary. Then another thing was musalleen, aqeem salah iqam salah However, one thing we have to realize is that the whole point of the salat is a very specific one. So there are a few verses that I'm going to mention to you that we've read, right? And several verses that we've seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses very important, which actually you can say underpin the whole reason for salat. Remember, salat is just the best form of dhikr. It's the, the dhikr in which you actually use your physical body to do that. There's no other dhikr like that except maybe hajj. In hajj, when you're going from Muzdarifa, Arafah, all of that is the dhikr of Allah because you're supposed to be thinking about Allah because that journey is for Allah. But you, don't, you only do that maybe once in a lifetime or maybe once in a while. But salat you do every day several times and it's that dhikr that you do that includes physically taking part in it right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm just going to mention a few verses to you that are very important which I could say right we could say that the main message of the entire Quran is to remember him right he can't be saying that throughout that remember me remember me remember me but in everything that he's saying it's all about the remembrance of Allah because people of taqwa they remember Allah and in a few places Allah makes it very clear for example Chapter 20, verse 14. Innani an Allah. I am Allah. I am certainly I am Allah. There is no God except me. La ilaha illa ana. Fa'budni. So worship me. Like th this is, um, according to one person, this is the kalima of Allah. He doesn't need a kalima, no formula of declaring his oneness. But this is what he says. He says, there is no God except me. So worship me. Then Allah says, wa aqimis salah and establish the prayer. Li dhikri for my remembrance. So the purpose of Salat is for my remembrance. That's the first verse. The second one that we did, chapter 29, verse 45. Utluma uhiya ilayk. Beginning of uh, the 21st Jews, we read this. Recite to them, Utluma uhiya ilayka, that which has been revealed to you of the book, and establish the prayer. Right? Establish the prayer. In the Salat, you remember we had a long discussion here, that the Salat, it stops people from 
obscenity and from wrong deeds. Right? But why do you establish the prayer? The secret is in the next part. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. Your Lord's remembrance is the most superior. It's the highest form. It's the greatest thing. And Allah knows what you do. So again, the dhikr is mentioned as, as the kind of underlying reason for all of this. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts uh, Surah Sa'd. Uh, chapter 38, verse 1. Sa'd wal Qur'ani the dhikr The Qur'an which is full of reminder. So the whole purpose of the Qur'an is a reminder we read two places today, at least. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind people, because they need to remind of Allah. Right? And lastly, I mean, this is just a few selections, just to give you an understanding that if we take one major message from this, is the reminder of Allah. Right? The reason we pray is for the reminder. If our prayer and we're not reminding, uh, remembering Allah, it means our prayer isn't proper. May Allah improve our prayer. The last one is chapter 21, verse 10. لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا we have revealed a book to you. Fihi dhikrukum. In it is your reminder. Afala ta'qilun. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? So now what we understand from here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us, give us an understanding that whatever shape, that's why so many places, sabbih bi ismi rabbik, sabbih bi ismi rabbik, sabbih bi ismi rabbik, yusabbihu lahu ma vis samawati wal ard, sabbaha lillahi ma vis samawati wal ard. It's all about glorification. Now you can remember Allah how you wish. Whether you do tasbih, that's a remind, remem, remembering Allah. You do takbir, Allahu Akbar. You, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah. Even salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a remembrance of Allah. You're saying, oh Allah, send blessings on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you do salat, all of that is, so do remembrance of Allah in however you do. That's why I will just leave you with, do at least a hundred istighfar in the morning, and then a hundred salawat. The first will purify us from the sins we've done since, if we've done since night time. And the durood sharif, the salawat, will just invoke the blessings which we need. Then in the evening we do it again. Right? So you've got istighfar and salawat. Istighfar, hundred, hundred times, and do la ilaha illallah hundred times a day as well. Because that is the best form of dhikr. And inshallah, Allah open up the Quran for us. We will look for the names of Allah, the manifestations of the name of Allah in the Quran. So alhamdulillah, Allah has allowed us to complete this journey. It was about an hour late, right? Because uh, probably about two hours late, I would say, because we have been spending 10, 15 minutes extra last few days. So it's about two hours late. Not bad, though. We'll have to change the whole topic to say the Quranic tafsir in 32 hours or something like that. 30 sounds good. Right? It still sounds good. May Allah forgive us the excess. Uh, it was all for a good reason. Jazakallah for being on this journey with us. Right? Because I think it's your barakah that we had the himma. Because the amount of time it takes to prepare for this, you know, along with all of the other Quranic works that we have to do in the month of Ramadan, Taraweeh, Tahajjud, etc. Right? This was one of the most uh, difficult, but probably one of the most productive Ramadans, inshallah, in terms of the Quran. So inshallah, it's been like that for you as well. And we ask Allah to give us something from this because the hadith makes it very clear that when the Quran is being recited or studied, the angels come, tranquility comes as well. But if this has opened up our, our understanding, a beginning, a bit of a sneak peek, a bit of uh, a vista into what Allah wants from us, then inshallah we've been successful. But this is only the beginning. I've mentioned to you before how many stages, how many levels, how much more, and there's no end to it. But may Allah allow us to be students of the Quran until we die. And then we Allah allow us all to be teachers of the Quran at some level as well. So we are of the best of people. Allah bless you. We will make a very short dua and then by that we will end. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tiyad al jalali wal ikram. اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث جزا الله عنا محمدا ما هو أهله سبحان الله العلي الأعلى الوهاب اللهم يا معدن الجود والكرم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا خير المسؤولين ويا خير المعطين يا الله we ask you for your special grace at this moment we know that your mercy descends at the completion of the Quran we know, that your, we know that du'as are accepted and angels pray when the Qur'an is completed. Today we have just had our completion of the Qur'an. Oh Allah, accept this completion. Oh Allah, we ask that you forgive us our mistakes, our errors, our shortcomings. 
we were surely had a lot of shortcomings. Oh Allah, in the time that we had, we did the best that we could with your enablement. So we thank you first for allowing us to do this. But then we seek your forgiveness for any wrongs and any shortcomings. Oh Allah, we ask that you benefit us from this, that you make this a source of illumination for us in this life and in the hereafter especially, that you allow us to become students of the Quran and teachers of the Quran, that you make us people of the Quran, that you make us rise on the day of judgment as the people of the Quran, and that you allow us to be with the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to be in his company, to drink from his, uh, from his hand, from the hawd of Kawthar. Oh Allah, we ask that you keep us reading the Quran, studying the Quran, perfecting our reading of the Quran, and understanding and analyzing the Quran, helping others with the Quran, making our life according to the Quran. Oh Allah, grant us light in front of us, behind us, on our right, on our left, in our hearts, in our eyes, in our seeing, in our hearing. Oh Allah, make us light. Oh Allah, full, uh, fill us with your light. Oh Allah, do not allow us to be munafikeen on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, do not allow us to rise with nifaq or any traits of nifaq and hypocrisy. Oh Allah, all the things that the Quran has told us that we should be doing, facilitate that for us. You, you have said, وَنُيَسِّرُكَ yusra. Oh Allah, you have mentioned that you will facilitate. We ask you for greater facilitation. Oh Allah, allow us to take those first steps in which we do that. Protect us from all the evil that's mentioned in the Quran that we should abstain from. Oh Allah, do not make us of the disbelievers. Do not make us of the hypocrites. Do not make us of the wrongdoers. Do not make us of the criminals. Oh Allah, make us of the salihin and the muttaqeen. Grant us the a'la illiyeen. Protect us from the sijjeen. Oh Allah, assist us and help us and assist our family and our progeny until the day of judgment. Make us of those who establish the prayer, who establish the prayer for your remembrance. Oh Allah, make us of those who remember you abundantly and who are those, as you've mentioned in the Quran, those who believe in Allah, they, they love Allah most intensely and most ardently. Make us of those people. Oh Allah, and finally about our situation, this is, for some people, this is the last day of Ramadan. This is... This could be for the last day of Ramadan for everybody. Oh Allah, we ask that you accept from us whatever we've done in this month of Ramadan, especially this Quran, uh, Quran study. Don't let this be the last of it. Don't let us turn our backs to the Quran and put the Quran away as soon as this, Ram this month ends. Allow, allow this journey to be just the beginning for a great journey of the Quran after Ramadan. Allow the lights of this Ramadan and to bless our, our, our life until we, until we die, until we depart this world into the next world. Oh Allah, above all, we ask that you bring us back into the masajid. Oh Allah, the masjids have been closed. What a great crime and sin it must have been. What a shortcoming on our behalf. Oh Allah, what shortcoming they must be that we're still deprived of the masjid. That even tomorrow people are going to either not do Eid prayer or be doing Eid prayer in places other than masajid. Especially in this country. Oh Allah, in some countries it's opened up, but in other countries it hasn't. Oh Allah, what have we done? What is our shortcoming that we have not opened up yet? Oh Allah, this is all in your hands. Oh Allah, whatever it is, oh Allah, shower us with your mercy. Shower us with your forgiveness. Make us worthy of us coming back. What, what, when in history have the masjids been closed globally throughout the world like this? It is so difficult to think if there's ever been a case, maybe they've closed in some places, but have they ever been closed throughout the world in such mass numbers? And we've had... We have more masjids than we've probably ever had in history before. And the majority of them seem to be closed in many countries and they've just opened up in some countries. Oh Allah, whatever it is, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you for purification. We ask you for taqwa. And we ask you for worthiness. We ask you for worthiness. We ask you for worthiness of your mercy, your rahmah, your mercy. Oh Allah, allow us to come back to these masajid. Allow them to allow us to come and bask in the in the mercy that's disseminated in this in these masajid. Oh Allah, accept whatever good we have done this, in this month of Ramadan and forgive us our shortcomings. Make this Ramadan better than any Ramadan before it. Allow the blessings to endure after Ramadan. Oh Allah, accept all of those who facilitated the people of this masjid, the the producers, those who sit here and and assist us in everything and disseminate out there. Those who've listened, those who've learnt. Oh Allah, bless us all. Allow us to unite together in Jannatul Firdaus and allow us 
to have many such sessions like this in the future where we study your book and we study your deen. Oh Allah, accept from us. Oh Allah, accept from us. Oh Allah, accept from us. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil.